five huge orchids. <laughs> XXL, big lip, everything about them is big. But I wanted to run these five by you in case you always say that, well, you don't have space for big orchids like these. And I thought, well, seeing as I've got them and I've had a couple of years of experience growing them now, including my limited indoor space when they have to come inside for winter, for an orchid enthusiast, space is always a problem. But don't let that turn you off if you wish that you could be able to grow large orchids, but you think your space is too small. Let me give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about here. First of all, <laughs> I love my little itty bitty miniatures, but I'm a person of extremes. When it comes to big blooms, massive lips, then I've got five orchids at least that I can show you. Right now, at least two are in bloom. We've got one in bud, but let me tell you that these are the ones that I would highly recommend for you to have in your collection if you haven't already got them because you think they are too big. The elephant in the room, <laughs> in my opinion, maybe there are two, but in my opinion, is the Caplia Dinard Blue Heaven right smack in the middle. This orchid is enormous when she blooms and she is enormous in her structure as well. I'll get in a little bit closer right now. I'm gonna show you why it's okay to have her even though you have limited space. Then there is Chunya Good Life number one massive orchid as well massive lips everything about this orchid is huge not so much the fragrance but still a beautiful orchid to have in the collection of reliable bloomer a cross that isn't complicated to have in a home environment either light levels for all of them are pretty much the same they are all sort of intermediate to hot growers but I can assure you that when it comes to knockout fragrance if that is what you want I would recommend the Cattleya Dinard Blue Heaven because my goodness, if you are a fan of cinnamon, big blousey, big structures, and you don't have enough space, well, isn't that the story for everybody that wants more orchids? We don't have the space, but you can still fit these orchids into your collection. So let's get in a little bit closer and let me show you why it can be done, even if you think you've run out of space. While I was readjusting the viewfinder and getting to pot level, the fragrance of this Dinard Blue Heaven is just all over the place. It is divine, divine. Anyway, a must have. Now, there's a common denominator with all these orchids. And uh, yes, once again, it is the size. But let's get them a little bit more into a perspective where we can see what I'm on about with regards to their growth habit. So I'm going to use the ones that are not in bloom as my examples because they're less dangerous and I think I should be okay with the buds. So we have golf green hair pig on the left here, got golden cellar in the middle, and I have the Rincolalia digbiana right here to the right. Let's scoot back a little bit. Look at how they grow. They are all on a single rhizome. You can have multiple leads coming up, which wouldn't be a problem either. There's no reason to have to think, well, if I've got multiple leads, I can't fit her. But look at the growth habit. All bolt upright. My pot size here is 18 centimeters. My pot size here is 20. And this way, you can see three massive orchids on a minimal kind of space. Now, if I do this and put the smaller pot in between the bigger pot. You can see how I can fit them all nice and snug up against the other alternating pot size, which saves me another two centimeters. The growth habit of an orchid, no matter its size, is fundamental to know and to train so that you can fit a large orchid or several large orchids like this on your shelf. Because yes, I've got two that are in bloom which is fabulous. But most of the time, they're not in bloom all at the same time, which allows you to own these large orchids without having to worry that much about space. I know I am presumptuous in what I am saying here and now, 
But I thought that if people think, well, I don't have the space for big orchids, maybe I could run it by you that you can have XXL size orchids because they don't bloom all at the same time. And if you do light training and if you have a support when needed as backup, you can train the growth to pretty much grow straight upright and then like back into the pot. So let's just say, for example, let me scoot golf green hair pig out of the way. And let's just say we've got here Rincolalia digbiana, right? So here we have a brand new growth coming. This is the back of the orchid. And if the light were to come from this side here, you would face the orchid away from the light, away from the growing point. So that the growth here is searching for the light that's coming from this direction and would go upright into the pot. This is fundamental for growers that are not necessarily always growing indoors under lights where the lights are coming from the top. So basically I want to encourage people that say I don't have the space to think that if they see big blousy blooms and they want a piece of this magic in their grow space but they think they don't have the space, don't be discouraged. Try it with one. And you can train the growth in such a way that your pot size determines how much shelf space you have by alternating pot sizes between your top guns, as I call these my top guns because of the size, obviously. Now, you might say, yes, but what about the leaves that curl over, that don't grow bolt upright like the Digbiana here? The majority of them will go upright. And then we can talk about fertilizing and getting the leaves to come to strength so that they do grow upright as opposed to curl. There's always a certain variable about how an orchid will grow. But 80% of the time, you are able to control what is happening in your pot with regards to how your orchid grows upright in the pot. And then you are able to also grow several of them based on how you stagger the pot size. My goodness, that cinnamon fragrance from the Dinard is knocking me out. <laughs> yes, speaking of rooms and speaking of big orchids and speaking of big fragrances, it is possible that a fragrance can be too heavy, but hey, we can crack open the window a little bit here or there and still have the pleasure of big orchids. Unfortunately, my golden cellar is not in bloom, but I consider her also one of my big lip orchids. But if we look at the size, let's say the height, Let's take the straightest leaf of the golf green hair pig right here. And we're looking from base to the top at 39 centimeters. So that is my tallest orchid in the collection. 39 centimeters of height to a full grown mature growth. Air space is normally not our problem. It's shelf space. And then of course, when they bloom, we want to enjoy the blooms. Then we move the big top guns that are blooming for us forward onto the front of the shelf so that we can enjoy them no matter what happens with the orchids in the back. Keeping in mind all the time that the new growths, if there are new growths in the back row, they should always be facing opposite of the light source. Again, if you're on a shelf and you got light from above, this doesn't apply. But if you are growing outside, like in my case for most of the year, opposite from the light source, make sure the growths come straight up and in, into the pot. And then you can enjoy your blooms from the ones that are blooming in front because we don't need to see the foliage. And there is plenty of space. These are two 20 centimeter pots. There's plenty of space to have these two together. I highly recommend to not be shy about hitting the cart button when you see very, very big orchids thinking you don't have the space. I am currently growing 300 plus orchids. These top guns are always on the top shelf of my dining area. And how I manage to cram that shelf full is by staggering my pot size, depending on what is in the orchid. And even though the leaves touch, if the orchid is clean when it comes in, then it is just a matter of making 100% sure to go through and look at the leaves every once in a while because as orchid collectors we want more and more. We need to do the best we can with the space we have available. Leaves will touch and it's just a question of keeping them clean and wiping them. 
If there is a pest issue, then it's not that big a deal to take the orchid out of that shelf and look at what else might be affected, clean it up, and then put the orchid back in the shelf. Again, I do not want to sound presumptuous, but I feel that a lot of people might shy away from these enormous orchids saying, I don't have the space. And what a shame if that is the case. There are so many little fear factors out there about leaves not touching, not having enough space, pests being transmitted from one orchid to the other. In my climate, for example, right now, these orchids are all outdoors. But when they come into the winter, I have to find a space for them in my limited space and it fits. So this is just a quick video. If you are looking at any web pages and thinking, what do I want for Christmas? Who I'm going to give a hint, hint, nudge, nudge for an orchid. The ones that I would recommend if you can get your hands on them. Cattleya Dinar Blue Heaven. I mean, really. And the fragrance. Chunya Good Life number one right here. Gorgeous. No fragrance. It's more just a plastic fragrance. Rincolelia digbiana right here. Gorgeous orchid, bolt upright growth, very easy to grow. Has a gorgeous, beautiful, huge lip as well, and is somewhat fragrant, not overpowering like the Denard right now. And then also golf green hair pig is one I recommend. It is not an unruly orchid at all. It grows upright. And then golden cellar in the back there, also not an unruly orchid. All the growth habits are similar. It's a rhizome, it's a tight rhizome. They're not lanky, sprawling rhizomes. There is no issues with regards to how big a pot can be or not be because of the long rhizome. These are compact growers. I know it sounds contradictory, but when you look at this little space that I have here, you see I've got five massive orchids and they're not even occupying a square meter. And I have more of these behind me on the east side that have to go on a shelf indoors. There is no reason that you would not be able to grow two or three really big orchids if that is what you would like to do, but have been put off by, oh, my leaves would touch. Never mind. Don't let that deter you from buying a big, big orchid. Oh, they're unruly. Don't worry about it get the light training right, and they will stay nice in their pots. So big orchids are not any more demanding than small orchids. It's just that we somewhat feel maybe, no, I don't have the space to grow these big orchids. Well, I hope that when you consider another shopping spree or you're putting out a little Christmas wish list that you would consider including XXL orchids so that you can enjoy something that is spectacular and not that difficult to grow in an environment that may not include outdoor growing. So I hope that this little video is of help. I hope that it motivates you. And I hope that you enjoyed looking at some of these blooms. And let me know if you ever, ever get one and how you feel about what I've just said. So thank you very, very much for watching from XXL Orchids with Big Lips. Here in southern Spain, soon to be indoors. Yikes. Have a beautiful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye.